Outrocast. Tarin, how is your day going aside from talking to me? <laughs> it's going fantastic. Been in a bunch of meetings and uh, just looking forward to, to this conversation. Oh, when you say meetings, some artists love the meetings because they like to be hands on with their marketing, their brand, etc. Were you always into that or is that a recent thing for you? Uh, it's intensified a bit recently because we're planting a brand new church. But yes, I've always enjoyed meetings. I've been a meeting guy uh, and, and love being a part of the minutia of what's happening. Minutia is a great word there. So you have the creative output and the business mindset. That's not a very common thing from my experience in music. Were you from day one into the minutia? Uh, yes, I I love all of that. I don't want to get information that makes my eyes glaze over, but I like knowing the why behind decisions and I have always felt like you can only make decisions as good as the information that you have. So I try, I tell people on my team, information is my love language. So share as much as you can until I tell you you're losing me. <laughs> well, you have new music, you're hosting award shows, you're out and about. How long was it in the making that you had new music coming for? Well, we've been working on it for a while. We knew that there was more story to tell in the join the morning release and we had some songs that i just really wanted to hear wanted people to hear uh so we plotted we schemed and uh we got it out well when you're putting out an album is it one for one meaning if we hear 13 songs on the album did you record 13 or did you pair that down for 35 uh it's many many more songs than that usually around a hundred or more songs wow that we yeah that we work through and see what we really want and then we'll get it down to about 20 we'll make some hard choices and then we'll go in and we're we'll record 13 or 14 and put out 11 or 12. now do any of those songs that don't get used wind up as the features because you feature with a lot of prominent artists as well. Uh, they usually end up either sitting on my Dropbox for all eternity or I'll send them to other artists. And I'm fortunate enough to have some other artists record some of those songs. A weird question related to all the business minutia. Are you subject to a publishing deal where they go, you have to deliver X number of songs and that's where pressure to keep writing comes from well there is an expectation of delivering songs there's not a lot of pressure on it but they do tie what you have the ability to make to how much of a song you actually wrote so they want you to write in total a certain number of songs right uh, so that you can unlock more resource so it there is a bit of a game to it i have kind of just disregarded that mm -hmm. i just want to record the best songs i feel like the best artists of all time recorded the best songs period whether they wrote 100 percent, 10 percent, or none of it you record the best songs you win so that's been my mindset what you were just talking about with percentages, it sounds like you're talking about the MDRC clause in a publishing contract. Is that what it is? Uh, Yeah, it's a bunch of clauses like oh, that. And we've that all the clauses together in a way that you can't understand. Yeah. So. Yeah, where they go, okay, well, you have 50% of that song, a third of that song, and right. an eighth of that song. So therefore, that counts as one song. To that's qualify right. towards your next advance. That's that's right. Well, yep. kudos to you on being diversified in terms of your artistic pursuits. You're one of those people we never know where you're going to pop up next. So is the next tour fully booked or what's coming up for that? We're doing a This Is Jesus tour. It's a Christmas tour. Mm -hmm. And I get to be with Jordan Smith and Katie Nicole. And it's going to be amazing. We did a full day of filming together and it was so fun. Uh, just great, great people. Uh, a unique night. I 
haven't done a lot of Christmas shows, I usually stay away from them uh, because Christmas as a season is overwhelming in itself. Then mm -hmm. you throw performing shows and then doing music that you don't do a lot. Um, it, it's quite a learning curve. So I am excited for it, though, this year. I'm up for the challenge, and I'm looking forward to seeing people out on the road for those seven shows. That's a fascinating topic for me because a lot of artists, their peak season is Christmas, like Trans-Siberian Orchestra. For 20-ish years now, you know, they're on the road from November to December. And then... Halloween comes around and Elvira is out. There's certain people who have certain seasons. So when you're a Christmas related artist, when do you actually get to celebrate Christmas? Well, for me, I usually protect my Christmases. So I've never done a Christmas tour. I did one Christmas show maybe six years ago uh, that was kind of close to Christmas. Uh, but I try to protect those days. I love being home for the holidays. Mm -hmm. There is something just special about being with family, even mm -hmm. when you're in Texas and it's still 75 degrees at Christmas. Uh, I just love the season. So try to protect that time. I would imagine, though, uh, how people approach it. And this is just folks that travel a lot. You don't have to be a musician to understand this. But instead of celebrating days, you celebrate occasions. Oh, so, can't always do birthday on the birthday you can't always do anniversary on the day of the anniversary but you can still celebrate the occasion you know within a reasonable time well i was in the room for that concept and lyrics so do i get 50 percent of the publishing <laughs> that well, now anyway. you're learning now you're learning i had a phone call with a friend yesterday and he was getting ready to go into a writing session and I said, well, we talked right before, so I get at least 7% of whatever song you write today. <laughs> yeah, that person breaks your heart. Therefore, they get 25% of the song forever. Yes, uh, yes. <laughs> yeah, so the church, the upcoming tour, the recent music, et cetera, doesn't sound like a lot of downtime for you. But when you do get downtime, where does it go? The golf course. Re if okay, I, okay. Oh, yeah. If I That's... got time playing golf. Now, that's super intriguing because I'm going to say more than half of the musicians that I interview are golf people, even if they're the most tattooed metal artist ever or the most mellow yacht rock artist. Golf seems to be this common denominator. How did you get into that? I started playing two, two and a half years ago, almost three years ago now. I got invited to a golf tournament and went to Dick Sporting Goods and bought top flight clubs and went and played tpc sawgrass in florida which i'm probably the first and last person to ever play a 200 dollars bag of top flight clubs at tpc sawgrass but i just fell in love with the game that day i've upgraded my gear since then uh so i've i've just enjoyed it it's been a great place of reprieve for me and uh, get to get out there with some friends and learn something new. Do the clubs come with you on tour? They do, absolutely. I try to get nine holes in as often as I can out on tour. Any more than that kind of tires me out. But uh, I'll get out there and, and shoot nine and, and enjoy it. What I've read is uh, Alice Cooper, the famous hard rock singer, 18 holes on the off days, nine on the off days every day on tour. Yeah, that's a lot. I don't think I'm playing that much golf. <laughs> but uh, but the TPC is now your friend, it sounds like. Oh, man. It's so beautiful. Beautiful experience. And it's been a cool way to see different cities. You know, a lot of times when you're going in on tour, you're seeing basically concrete uh, yeah. until you walk out on stage and the room's filled with people. So it's been great to get outside, drive through the city a little bit, get to the outskirts and, and spend some time. Well, two quick questions and then I'll let you go. And the first one is, who is there an artist besides, you know, the love of gospel that made you want to become a professional singer, a particular album or artist? That is a great question. I think just going back to 
my early days singing in the church choir, it didn't necessarily make me want to be an artist. I'd say Michael Jackson was like my biggest artist inspiration. But in my mind, Michael Jackson in the world that he existed in was like another planet. It just, the, the, it didn't seem like there was any connection except through the radio or the TV to whatever magic was happening somewhere that I could never reach. But for me, the church choir was the place that I was actually able to discover a gift, even though it was very, very raw and undeveloped, and have it aligned with an actual purpose. And that's what I loved. It wasn't, and it's still not just singing for the sake of the art form, although I love it. It's the fact that it's a vehicle for my purpose, that it mm -hmm. connects me with people, that allows me to encourage and uplift and things like that so that's why i really love it and that's where my love for it started was in the church choir mm -hmm. now the last question for you is your resume your cv if you're from england if you want to call it that uh, it speaks for itself where it's just top artists no matter the genre that you've toured with recorded with collaborated with etc is there anyone still on that wish list for you uh, yes, of course. Uh, I would love to collaborate with Taylor Swift. <laughs> I actually wrote her a letter uh, before this last album process to get her to feature on one of the songs. Uh, I don't know if it ever made it to her or not, uh, but that would be one that would be bucket list. Uh, there are so many just people that I respect, their talent, their gift, uh, the way that they have stewarded it. Uh, so. But she's at the top of the list for sure. Was it a handwritten letter or a printed letter from a computer? Handwritten. Handwritten at the kitchen table. So I thought if anything had a chance to get to her, it would be a handwritten from one of my old journals. Like I made it as sentimental as possible. Um, but I'm still waiting for that one. Well, I think you're in a win-win situation because maybe you eventually get that coll collaboration. But if you don't, maybe you have a song in there about how she didn't get back to you. Because all of her <laughs> songs are about the people that wronged her. Now you have the song about I was going to say, that'd be a very Taylor thing to do, for sure. <laughs> well, hey, <laughs> thank you for all the positivity that you put out into the world. Hope to see you live eventually in New York and looking forward to whatever's coming next from me, Taryn. Yes, sir. Thank you so much, man. Have a great day. And I love that space behind you. It's awesome. The wife tolerates it. She tolerates the hoarding <laughs> and the, the pop culture uh, collection, which is the opposite of yours. You look like you're in a vocal booth. I, I basically am. I basically am. Outrocast. <laughs>